for the first several years of Swift UI, navigation has been one of its biggest issues and people actually often ported UI kit to support things like pop to root or programmatic navigation via buttons instead of navigation links in their Swift UI apps. Well, thanks to navigation path and the new navigation stack API, this has actually become super easy. So let's walk through an easy but very usable navigation concept for pretty much any Swift UI app supported in iOS 17 and above. So first of all, of course, we're using navigation stack where we previously a few years ago used to use navigation view that has been deprecated. So now we're using navigation stack. And in this video, we will look at three different ways to navigate. First of all, using a navigation link without specifying a destination. We'll then look into a button, but this could also be a function in your view, in your view model or any other place. And then we'll also look at pop to root and how that is now implemented and hint, it's also very simple. So first of all, the basic of switch your navigation is now data driven. It used to be destination driven. So in the old days, you used to have this destination closure here and you either pass in a closure or you just pass in a view. So in this case, we would just pass in green page. And then if we click on the navigation link, it would navigate to the green page. But of course, this is outdated because this can't be triggered programmatically. So now we have this value here. And so we don't have any compilation errors. I'll just put in green. And an important note here is that this value can be any object that is hashable. And also a, a side note here, codable is just a type alias for encodable, decodable and hashable. So any type that is codable can also be passed as a value here. And string, for example, is hashable. So we can pass in a string here, but it's just a placeholder. What I would recommend doing is creating an enum for all of your uh, different navigation pages. So I usually call this navigation page. And by default, enums are internally inside of the Swift programming language represented by integers. That's why we don't need to make this hashable because as an integer, it is already hashable. So we can just create our different cases here. And I would say one case will be a yellow page and one case will be a green page. This could be profile or feed or video player, any major pages. So then we can replace our string value here with a navigation page dot green page. And you will see that now the navigation link is broken because, okay, it knows it should go or it receives a value green page of type navigation page, but which view should it show? That's why we now have the navigation destination view modifier, and this should be placed anywhere inside of the navigation stack. So having a look at the closure here, it should be inside the navigation stack. So I just attach it to VStack and I would generally recommend attaching this to some sort of root view, like a content view or a home view, just so you don't get lost in your own code base. So here we can add a navigation destination view modifier. There are a few different overloads, including this uh, binding based one, but we will of course be looking into this hashable type based one. And you can also chain multiple navigation destinations to support different types in your navigation links. So you could also have one for strings or one for a different enum or one for a custom type like a user profile to show the correct user profile view when a profile is selected in a list. Now, in our case here, we care about the navigation page, navigation page dot self as we're referring to the type. And then here we will get our page as an argument. And for the navigation destination, we will just switch over the page. And currently there are two cases. So case yellow, and here we will show our yellow page view and case green, we will show our green page view. And just like that, if we go back to the preview and click on our navigation link right here, it will correctly navigate to the green page. But how do we replicate this behavior with a simple button instead of a navigation link? This used to not be possible without some trickery, but nowadays it's super easy. So 
there is a concept of a navigation path. And for a first example, we will just create a state variable here. We will make this more sophisticated in a minute after this first example. So this will just be a navigation path. You don't need to specify any types here. This is very nice and usable. And then we need to attach this path to our navigation stack. And we do this via the path parameter and then just give it a binding to a navigation path. By itself, nothing changes here, but now we can access and manipulate this path in any place of our app, for example, in this button. So we could say path.append a value and we could append navigation page dot yellow page. And then if we click the button, we will actually navigate because the flow is like this. This value gets passed into our navigation path that then looks into our available navigation destinations for the provided value and it switches over our enum and it recognizes this case here and presents the yellow page view. But what happens if we want to navigate outside of a button or in a completely different view where we don't have access to the navigation path? Now, of course, we could pass it to our um, child views via a binding or via the environment. That would be an option. But another way that I personally prefer because it enables us to use this outside of views as well, for example, in service classes, or if you want to use view models, you can also use it in view models. And that is having a navigation manager. We will be using the add observable macro, and then we will just create a class called navigation manager. And in here, we will be now moving our path. And then inside of our content view, we can keep our state, but instead of having a state for the path, we will now be having a state for our nav manager. And this is our navigation manager. So you, so you could set it up like this, but I would actually prefer making this a singleton, even though people often complain about singletons and tell you not to do it. I think for a navigation manager, it really, really makes sense. So what is a singleton? A singleton is basically just a class with only one instance ever alive. So it's usually called shared. And here we just create a navigation manager just like that. But now to make sure that no other place in the app can create a second navigation manager, we have to make sure that our initializer is private. And just like that, we've created a singleton that can only ever have one instance. And as you can see, the compiler is uh, showing an error here because we cannot create a new navigation manager. So instead, we will just be saying navigation manager dot shared. And there we have it. Now, of course, we don't have our local path anymore. So we will say nav manager dot path here. And then we will say the same. in our button. Of course, we could move this into a function in our navigation manager. So for example, we could have a function go to yellow page and then we could just call this function here. So go to yellow page and then in that function, we manipulate our path and this would actually behave exactly the same just with a bit of a cleaner call site here. Now, having a look at our green page here, I added this pop to read root button, but it actually does nothing right now. So let's have a look at our green page. So this is just a Z stack with a green color and a button. And in here, there are now two different ways to implement this pop to root. So either we grab our navigation manager as a state again, or we can just get rid of that. And even simpler, inside of our button, as our navigation manager is a singleton, we can say navigation manager dot shared dot pop to root and just implement this as a function in our navigation manager. And this is actually also super simple. So we could say path dot remove last. So this would enable us to remove a few different pages. And we could, of course, remove last path.count and this would remove all elements from the path or even simpler, we could just create a new navigation path and therefore resetting everything and popping back to the root view. So if we navigate to the green page and we say pop to root, it pops to the root no matter how deep our navigation tree is.